She expects my client to support her, her boyfriend, and their new child. She demands money. She demands um, gas in her car. She demands groceries. She demands diapers. And in fact, he believes that her boyfriend is working out of the marital home using the internet he's paying for. This person that she claimed in her responsive declaration was only a friend and whom now she is five months pregnant by. Ms. Lowe, are you in agreement with that change to the visitation schedule? Are you objecting to the proposal made? Yes, Your Honor, I agree. That's the um, <clears throat> schedule that we've been maintaining since we agreed upon separation. And yeah. it seems to be the healthiest for the children and working out the best. So I agree with the petitioner's amendment to um, not go with their original parenting plan, but follow with the week on week off that we've been doing since okay. separation. Okay. So, and I'm just going to make sure, and again, I know I'm kind of pinch hitting here. So I want to make sure right now we're still on motions for temporary orders, correct? Yes. This is the first hearing on this case, your honor. Oh, okay. Um, so we are also asking that my client wants to return to the family home and I can get into that argument in a minute. Uh, we addressed in the motion our request regarding temporary use and possession of the vehicles and property in their current possession, um, payment of bills. Um, I think that was it. Uh, and child support. Uh, we, She and her responsive pleadings requested spousal support, although she did not make a specific request as to an amount. Um, Your Honor, as to the the, how, the marital home, my client did not agree to moving out despite mom's assertions that he did. Uh, the text messages do not reflect that he was in agreement with this option, and in fact, he never agreed to any of it. Uh, she demanded he moved out. She barked orders. She told him exactly how it was going to be, and that's what he was stuck with, or at least he felt that he was stuck with. He has a separate property interest in the home um, from a, a an inheritance that was constituted the down payment. And your honor, the fact is, it's my client who can afford the home. She can't to stay. To, she can't afford to stay in the home on her own. She's not working, and that is by choice. Um. And she has since moved her boyfriend in. Uh, this person that she claimed in her responsive declaration was only a friend and whom now she is five months pregnant by. So her representation to the court that this individual was just a support friend and just a good friend. No, it wasn't. <laughs> um, which validates my client's accounting of the facts in this case. The situation mom is currently in is of her own doing because of her choices. That does not relieve her of the responsibility now to support herself and to have equally support her children. She expects my client to support her, her boyfriend, and their new child. Um, and so where where is her boyfriend's obligation? That's what we have to ask. Um, why should my client be paying for, the, for a house to live, for him to live in rent free. He's not paying rent. Um, and my client is not only the out spouse, but the expectations that she places on him in the text messages are untenable and unfair. She demands money. She demands um, gas in her car. She demands groceries. She demands diapers. He doesn't mind those things, but he is also paying for her housing. He's paying the utilities. And in fact, he believes that her boyfriend is working out of the marital home using the internet he's paying for. So my client is continuing to pay for the internet and the utilities to make sure that they're paid. And so his credit doesn't get affected and to make sure his children are safe, but he is seriously being taken advantage of here. Um, that being said, there is absolutely no reason she cannot be working uh, and, oh, and as the court is aware, we just agreed to a 50-50 residential schedule. So that means that she, there's no reason she can't be working on her off weeks with, from the children. Uh, I'd like to point out for the court that she did not file a proposed parenting plan. She did not file a financial declaration. We have no idea what her expenses are, what her income is, if she has any. Um, she needs to get a job. If her boyfriend isn't working, he needs to be. If he isn't working, then he needs to, pay. if he is working, then he needs to pay rent, um, thereby reducing my client's obligation. 
He can choose to pay rent to my client or he can find his own place. My client is paying for everything right now and has been since this whole thing occurred um, where she just picked up and left with no notice for a month and three weeks and then just expects him to be out of the house, expects it to be in perfect shape, perfect condition upon her return. Um, my client wanted me to address the flea situation and the messiness of the house. The house is not as messy as she tries to represent. And here this guy is trying to take care of these kids and take care of kittens that she initially brought in. She decided to foster a bunch of flea ridden kittens and she brought them in the house. The flea issue started because of her. And then she tried to blame it on him. And now she's trying to use this declaration in this, this court process to say that it's him, it's his fault. It's his neglect, which is not the case. She also made some serious allegations about sexual assault and then talked to my client subsequently, wherein she informed him that, well, the last time they were together, she just didn't want to. Never once did she say no. Never once did she ask him to stop. She never yelled. She never screamed. She never cried. She never called the police. She never sought a restraining order. Even now, in response to our motion, she's not even seeking any kind of protection order or restraining order against my client. She has no fear. You can't consent to something and then turn around and claim it to be an assault just because it wasn't something you wanted at the time. If you didn't want it at the time, you need to speak up. You need to fight back. She didn't. So she can't come now to the court and say that my client is an abuser and he that he sexually assaulted her. Um, to mention the fact that it was not in the middle of a fight it was not it did not occur in out of rage or extreme emotions it just occurred they're a married couple um as to her again as to requests for her spousal support she makes no specific request she provides no financial documents we have no idea what the status is of her boyfriend and she is simply claiming that because they were married and during the marriage she got to be the stay-at-home mom she should continue to live that, la that life of luxury just after it was her decision to end the marriage um, and not have to support herself or equally support the children. So we are asking that our uh, our motion be granted, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Lowe, I have also received your uh, response. I did not receive a proposed parenting plan from you, but I have received your response to the petitioner's proposed parenting plan. What would you like the court to know? Um, well, Your Honor, there's many discrepancies in the petitioner's responses. I would just like the court to know that we had a mutual agreement when I wanted to get divorced that he would move out of the house. There was abuse in the relationship. That's why I left the home, the marital home during the time so that he could move out and it was safe. So when I returned, I have text messages showing that he knew I was at the airport. I was on my way home. He um, was preparing one of the vehicles for me. And originally he had said I could live in the marital home for a year. And then after I got back, everything changed. I am also two months pregnant, not five months pregnant. Um, in regards to the sexual assault, I did cry. I did say no. I don't feel like... It's necessarily appropriate for court, especially with me with no counsel, but I can't afford counsel at this time. I've done everything in my ability so far of filing TANF and find, filing for child support. Um, <clears throat> I have thrown out many suggestions to the petitioner, such as splitting the mortgage on the marital home or him not paying the mortgage at all, and me just continuing to raise the children in the marital home. I've been a stay-at-home mom since the birth of both of our children. So for those reasons, that's why I asked to stay. And that was our agreement. And he was moved out when I came back. So and um, you, it's hard. I'm sorry, Your Honor. And you, uh, there's a, another adult living in the house with you at this time? There is. I don't receive any support um, through the state for my other child that lives in the home who's 10 from a previous marriage or I mean relationship. And I don't receive any kind of support 
for my significant other who I am pregnant with right now. Um, and is your significant other who's living in the marital house with you paying any of the expenses for the home? No, your honor, but I have offered to start paying expenses in the home. I've never asked the petitioner to pay the mortgage. It was his conclusion that he was going to keep doing it. He said he didn't want the power to go out on the children. But my only request was to stay in the marital home and raise my children. I'm very flexible and everything else. But because this is a like a, a first hearing, we haven't gotten that far. And I can't afford counsel at this time. So I'm just kind of... And then the, what I'm able to. the period of time that you left Washington was about a month and a half. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor. And the, the children stayed in the home with Mr. Lowe? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So what I'm going to do going through the petitioner's proposed temporary parenting plan, give you my ruling, and then Ms. Petrie, if you would be so kind as to make any changes per my order. Um, I'll open it up for questions to jump, jump in if anyone has questions as I go through this. So number one, in general, I'll adopt the petitioner's proposed plan with some changes. Um, after review of the record, while I do uh, think there is some evidence of um, probably more like 3B problems on mother's part. I am going to reserve for now on 3A and B limiting factors. Uh, we'll reserve those for the final order. Decision making at this type, uh, at this time, excuse me, for school educational health care will be joint. I will adopt dispute resolution and custodian section six and seven as written. The parenting time schedule, I will adopt with the oral agreement that the parties have made here on the record today. Um, that will include numbers nine and 10 for summer schedule and holiday schedule. Um, I don't see it directly in here, but I am going to order that Mr. Lowe uh, remain in the marital home. Uh, at this time, do not believe it's appropriate for this court to order that Mr. Lowe pay expenses of this home while a new significant other is in the home. I also don't believe without further investigation that it's appropriate that the children at this time be expected to reside with a significant other that the court knows nothing about. So Mr. Lowe is to return to the home. Ms. Lowe is to vacate. Mr. Lowe will be responsible for payment uh, of the, and I believe you had that listed in your original motion, all of the expenses uh, related to the home. Um, yes, which includes the mortgage, utilities, insurance, property taxes, vehicle, um, all of that will be the responsibility of uh, petitioner. As I understand it, this is a five-year marriage. I'm not ordering support at this time. Uh, excuse me, I'm not ordering any sort of um, alimony or marital payments um, to Ms. Lowe at this time in a temporary order. I will adopt 11, 12, 13, 14 as proposed by petitioner. I'm going over to the temporary family law order that petitioner proposed. Um, so I will adopt in its entirety then um, the temporary family law order, which does require that the petitioner uh, or allow the petitioner to return to the home and stay in the family home. A uh, respondent must move out of the family home within 30 days of today's date. Your Honor, will the court address child support today? Um, I was just going to turn to you um, and ask the state if based on my rulings on the temporary orders, if there were any changes to the state's proposals for child support. Um, there's not. Uh, the, the kids are receiving TANF benefits and that I know that is a little more complicated because the statute prohibits a residential credit when the children are receiving TANF benefits. Um, 
Our proposed worksheets were filed November 13th. We used the father's actual income based on his September 29th wage stub, which he filed with the court. The mother has no employment security history, so we imputed her at minimum wage 32 hours per week. Um, I do note that that results in a transfer payment of $1,787 a month from father to um, essentially to the state of Washington, so long as mom remains on TANF. Um, I do recognize, given your, given your ruling, that that may seem somewhat unequitable, but I'm not aware of uh, an exception under the law at least not in regards to a residential credit. I do believe a residential credit would be appropriate considering that they are going to be doing 50-50 um, and it is for two children. I also would request that she be imputed at 40 hours a week. There's absolutely no reason she can't work full-time. My client certainly does and he gets by. Um, and just briefly in reply, Your Honor, uh, the statute, which I don't have in front of me right now, uh, specifically says that a residential credit cannot be granted when a parent is receiving TANF. TANF is evidence that there's insufficient funds in the household to support the children. Um, and then in, in terms of the mother's income, uh, we followed the imputation statute, which indicates when there's no employment history and a parent is receiving TANF benefits, they're to be imputed at minimum wage 32 hours per week. Here's what I'm going to do on this because I don't have I'm just looking through my papers diligently. Sometimes things get attached to the back of them. We did not send over a proposed order. I was okay. Unsure. I okay. was unsure where primary parent would land. Understood. Let's do this um, because uh, let's set this case to December five for um, presentation of um, the orders I've already ruled on, unless they get signed ahead of time. But it sounds like um, maybe if Ms. Petrie is arguing that there should be a residential credit, obviously the state's arguing the statute doesn't allow that. We'll set this on for a hearing um, as to child support on December 5th at one o'clock, along with presentation if that has not already been signed. Okay. And then certainly, Ms. Petrie, if you want to file briefing with the court, I'll give Judge Bassett a heads up that that issue's coming. Um, but if you want to file any short briefing, feel free to do so. Any questions or clarifications on the temporary orders? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I would just ask that since the court is granting his petition to have me move within 30 days, given my circumstances of him leaving the home willingly and my pregnancy and having to relocate my other kids, including the ones I share with him, that at this time, um, I'd be given more than 30 days to find new residents. I know the petitioner had told me in person that he would extend it till January if it went this way, but I don't know what their feelings are okay. on the matter. What I'm going to do right now, um, and you know, one of the reasons I'm making this ruling is I do think it's wholly inappropriate that for this court to have Mr. Lowe paying for household expenses when another adult uh, is living in that marital house. So I am going to keep the 30 days right now. But if Ms. Petrie wants to, um, if her client wants to work with Ms. Lowe on an extension of that, we can certainly add that to the order. I have no issue with the parties going beyond 30 days. Um, I wouldn't agree to anything less than 30 days. I do think that 30 days um, to move out is sufficient. But again, if Mr. Lowe wants to agree to longer, feel free to put that in the order. I have no problem signing that. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you all. If there's no other questions, you all are free to log out.